Hello everyone, my name is Craig. I am about to build a sailboat and I thought that you might want to see how I do it, either to learn what not to do or to get ideas on what you can do. I'll document how much everything costs and what I use and post it for everyone to see. So first things first, this is the metal. These are five by 10 feet, 11 gauge. I think I would have gone with 10 gauge instead. These are a little bit thinner than I want them to be, but I think they'll do. I'm gonna lay them down on the ground and you'll see the assembly process. This is all I'm gonna use. Here is a grinder with cut off wheels. Helmet for the welding very inexpensive welder and three come alongs in order to pull the steel together as I go. You'll see that as well. Each piece weighs 250 pounds. I've got 14 sheets for a total of 3,500 pounds. So as you can see, moving this stuff around is not gonna be easy. It's gonna have to be done with the winches and maybe some jacks and things like that. Here we go. So here is how the bow will fold in. You can see that cut at the bottom will meet like so. And I'll be welding that of course. And then the front will be straight up and down pretty much trying to maximize the space of the boat. I'm planning on it being less than 30 feet and only eight and a half feet wide so that I can trailer it on the road. So here is the line that I traced from that cardboard cutout. I'll be cutting off that piece of metal and welding the two halves together later on. So here's how I'm moving everything around. It's just a very small cart I built a long time ago to move an engine around. I'm gonna flop that piece down and scoot it over next to the other piece. So this is as far as I got before the welder broke. Uh, turned out to just be this switch. Um, took me about half an hour to figure it out. This is a great welder. I really like it. I've had it for over 10 years. Um, just this little switch was the only problem. You can't find this switch easily, so I just hot wired it for now. And now we're back in business. Let's see how long it lasts. As much as I love this welder, the wire that comes from Lincoln is horrible. So I switched to Inatub, and all of a sudden my welding improved dramatic. Mistake number one. So this is how it should have gone. This is how I cut it. This is the contraption to try to lift 750 pounds onto its side. Step one, getting there little by little. All right, there it is, finally at least on its side. You might be wondering why I chose 10 feet by five foot sections instead of just getting one big long section. Two reasons, one is cost and the other is being able to get it delivered up here in the mountain and handle it myself. Here goes attempt number two. The first one caved in. Here's the latest progress. Just tack welded the very tip of the bow. Slowly but surely, things are coming together. So through a combination of come-alongs, and this lever here. I was able to line up the top pretty much perfect. And then the bottom is real close. 
I think that might just be the way I cut it instead of the way that it got lined up. So I'm going to go with it. I'm going to start welding and I'll clamp it as I go to put it all together. It's going to be fun. Here's the weld so far. Very sloppy, I agree. Um, it's just hard to do these edges. I'll go back over with a grinder, grind it all down so it looks good. I'll re-weld it, grind that down, and then weld from the inside as well, just to make sure. I wanted to show you about how far I can get between welds. This little welder has the one drawback of not having a long duty cycle, which means that you can't use it continuously for very long. So I just make about six inch welds and then give it a break for 10 minutes and then go again. All right, well, end of day two. This is what we've got so far. Making progress, little by little. Here you can see I'm using straps and pulleys on the bottom to slowly widen the base. I want to pull the sides apart. Eventually the top is going to be eight and a half feet across and so will the bottom, maybe like about eight feet on the bottom. I'm hoping to get a curve in there started. And I've got this support still welded in in the back to keep things spread there. I'm still moving the sides just little by little, but you'll see it hardly takes any effort at this point. At this point, even this little tiny come along strap has enough power to pull it. What a difference, right? It looks huge inside. So the next thing is to pull in this corner in the front. So we're going to squeeze those together and weld them. I'm hoping to use this come along to close this gap. All right, this isn't quite working out. It's pushing this part in. Um, so I'm going to have to put something inside of the bow to keep that convex shape. I'll fit this in right here and see if I can bend around it. All right, so I pulled that one in with a strap to try to wedge it in as far as possible. Just whacked that one with a rubber mallet. Um, just one of these. And then tack welded in the pieces of metal, hoping to keep those pieces in as I pull in the sides from the outside. So it looks like it is working, but I have another adjustment to make. You can see the block of wood here is further up than this one. And so it's causing this side to bend in earlier than this side does. I don't know why I put it that way. That was just dumb. Here is the bow for now, this bottom part, starting to curve in. <clears throat> it's not perfect by any means, it needs a lot of work here. I'll cut that down, re-weld, make it look nice. But for now it's stuck together and I'm pretty happy. Alright, so today you can tell there's not a whole lot that's different. I spent almost all day failing, but made a little bit of progress and an idea that I think will make things easier in the future. Um, these come-alongs can press in on the middle of the side to bow it out just a little bit, which is good enough to make a start on making welding for all of the frames that I'm going to put across. Um, and there's the first one in the bow. So by the way, this is the end of day four. All right, so big breakthrough with this method today. I know it sounds simple, but to me it was a discovery. I just added an extra block here so I could get more pressure this way, and I'm able to conform the hull 
almost to the um, curve of the rib and I should be able to just pull it in a little bit as I go towards the bottom as I weld it. Um, so I feel pretty confident about this method. I'm going to cut a whole bunch of these metal pieces over there. Um, I'm just going to go down that whole length probably. It's going to take forever. But hey, when all you got is hand tools and you want to do it cheap, this is what I got to do.